and welcome to another connection drill video. This is the second of my top two drills to do as a connection enhancer. And I will tell you that this exercise that we're going to do, we call it the side by side, takes everything that we learned in the patty cake. So go back and watch the patty cake video and we can apply it to this position, but it also gives us more three dimensional practice space in order to hone our connection drill. So once again, if we don't have a partner to practice, or even if we do, we want to make sure that we're going on the correct foot at the proper time. And this one, unlike the patty cake, we're not necessarily mirror imaging one another. We're going to feel like we are, well, I guess the mirror would be in between us from the side. But we're going to feel like we're running a three-legged race. So if Shane is going with his natural leader foot being the left, and I'm going with my natural follow foot being the right, those feet would move past together, and then our outside feet, and then our inside feet, and then our outside feet. So if Shane takes over and he decides to lead me without touching, I'm keeping him in my line of sight. Remember from the first video we had discussed the fact that I don't need to have my eyeballs glued at his feet. I keep him in my peripheral vision and his body flight and his intention with his body language allows me to know when he is moving. Then we go ahead and set this up for something to touch. So the leader is going to offer the hand out in front and the follower is gonna relax the hand over the top. Now leaders, what I like to say is thumbs up like you're Fonzie and with the fingertips out as the lady can relax her fingers over the top and we can all relax our thumbs. We want to make sure at this point in time that we use the forearms. We're not going to try to crank the wrist up or down. So leaders, if you can keep her middle knuckle in line with her elbows, that's the proper alignment. Follows, your goal in life is to stay connected with the forearm to the elbow. At this point, it's going to be the leader who decides when he's disconnecting the arm or not. And if we do the same type of moves that we did in the patty cake exercise, we can walk forward and we can walk backward, staying synchronized with those feet. We can also walk forward and have a pause and continue walking forward. The same thing works going back. And we can also do the hesitation where we rock forward and back. So Shane will take me through that one real quick. Yeah, and take as many swings as you want there as far as shifting the weight. Because we want to really, ooh, that was a good one. Make sure that we're truly feeling and reflecting as a follow what we're feeling broadcast from our leader. So you'll probably notice that the thing that we did here in the side-by-side -side position is we kept our shoulders and our elbows firm yet pliable. So I was not cemented here being like a back track what Shane was trying to, to maneuver forward or backward. I'm staying firm, I'm not letting the arms swing willy-nilly or be gooey and spaghetti-like. And there's no, like the arm stays consistent to where we set it. I don't pull to get her to move. I, like I can move a little bit. I know I'm gonna go out on the left foot, she's gonna go out on the right. So I go, do I have her connection? because at the moment I'm on both feet, now I'm like, all right, I have her connection, I can move forward. What you'll probably see if we go from the side is that we've got the elbow about a hand's width from our ribs or our hips. It's set out in front as if we're playing the drums. And that's the position we are attempting to keep firm yet pliable. That way Shane is not independently leading from his arm, but he's leading from his entire body. And once again, as we talked about in the patty cake exercise, I suggest that the follows close their eyes so that they can be a pure receiver for what he or the leader is broadcasting. So Shane just took me through several of those different concepts that we talked about in the, the patty cake video and we applied it to the side by side. He's going to run away, but I wanted to come back <laughs> because this actually takes the connection exercise to a higher level. We have a three dimensional uh, element that we can add to this, and that is turning to face one another and or switching arms. So while Shane is walking forward or backward, we're gonna describe this going forward, he can, with his hand being like the locomotive along a railroad track, he can decide to separate the elbow, basically back up the, rail, the engine of the, the railroad um, train <laughs> and turn and face me. He's got both arms up, so not only is his body rotating, which leads me, but his body language is showing me that he will want the other hand, perhaps. 
Now, at this point in time, the leaders can choose to turn back the same direction and either resume the forward or backward, or as the railroad, or as the engine pulls backward along the railroad track, he offers the other hand, he can turn the other direction. Now, notice that Shane and I are not moving the feet underneath our body during all of that. We are simply swiveling toward the ball of our feet, and if Shane changes weight, for example, he turns and is over the forward foot, versus turning and staying over the backward foot, backward foot, there you go, <laughs> and then switch and stay over the backward foot, I should be able to feel that if I'm keeping my frame nice and solid. So this is the three-dimensional element. We'll go ahead and take it forward until Shane runs out of space, and then we'll take it backward, and he can show from the backward travel how he can turn, how we can switch hands, how we can take off again. I think going forward from that rotational position is probably the easiest. So I want to make sure that you do know once you rotate and turn and face your partner and then choose the other side, you can also walk backward. And the tip I will give you about that is if the leader is using his whole body to lead back and trying to stay connected with the forearm, and the follows golden lines to stay connected with the forearm, then she'll be able to feel if he's walking backward versus if he decides to back that engine up backward down the track, separate the arm, and turn to face one another. So in that aspect, you can have fun playing with this connection exercise because there's so many different dimensions that you can be working with, and it can help take your lead and follow connection up to the next level.